Well, it turns out that I am Dave. And uh, the other fellow is trying to be me. And we're having technical difficulties here. You already did the glass swipe. I was all ready for it. You want to try to do it together? Ready? Sure. <laughs> and together. Anyway. Ferris tools and band talk. And I'm Sean. Yep. Um, so we're very excited about our good friend, Bruce Nelson. Bruce is a good friend. It was his birthday the other day. He helped us line this up. Uh, this man really needs no introduction. Uh, Canadian icon is just something that rolls off the tongue. Uh, people out here in Halifax will know him. He's done plays at the Cohen. He's played Stainer's Wharf. He's done shows out here. Um, Neptune, yeah. Neptune uh, actor, singer, songwriter, uh, uh, you name it, uh, all genres. He's just not uh, a rock guy or a jazz guy. He covers the whole palette, if you will. Uh, Dave, bring him on. We're really excited about this. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alfie Zappa Austin. And here he is from Edmonton, Alberta. This meeting is Yay! How Hope are you? Sir? Aren't burning. We're saying really nice things about you now, Alfie. I don't believe it for a second. That's, <laughs> that's nice of you guys. I got to turn this red, this uh, phone off. There we go. Howdy. Sure. So, I mean, in the intro, we were talking, we're, in the intro, we we're talking actor, singer, songwriter, uh, multi genre musician i mean really you it, it to do it um and you're no stranger to this neck of the woods you're out you were out here all the time before all this stuff hit tell us what what you what you were up to just before everything shut down well i i uh, did a i recorded another record and i um uh, i went to toronto uh, uh 2019 the ass end of it and uh coming up to 2020 just about and i and I went and I thought, big, great, great idea to get to back together with all the guys, like the, the records that I did with them. We wrote like way back in the day when we first getting started and stuff. Jerry Mosby, Marco Luciani, there was just a whole bunch of us. And I thought it might be a good time at this point to see about getting together and um, seeing the guys feel and uh, maybe do a little bit of writing and just the camaraderie and see what the hell would come up with. I had a whole bunch of stuff kind of worked out. I went down there and I threw, I started throwing a bunch of ideas together. And by the time uh, uh, I had enough stuff that I had written already and then a few things that the guys got together, it was nice, you know, hanging with them. And um, But when I got back, I, uh, you know, with the, the whole idea of getting another record done, and as it turned out, I did. I did this... Uh, new record and uh, by the time it was all said and done uh, uh, actually while it was getting done actually it worked out pretty good that the way COVID was hitting and stuff I was kind of in the middle of finishing off a record so it gave me something to do in the interim um, even though people were mad anyway long story but um, I got that done and I got to deal with uh, Alma Records I talked to Peter Cardinelli who's the president of Alma Records in Canada in Toronto and he dealt with Canada but he's also hooked up with Universal Worldwide Nice. So um, in February, they released the record. And of course, through COVID, we just took our time waiting to see what the hell would happen. And uh, so the record's out and has been for this a year, for sure. You know, coming up February will be a year and just waiting to see what's going to happen with it. Uh, as far as uh, so that's that's something that I just uh, was just talking with Peter, the uh, Peter tonight, just saying hi. And we're looking at releasing maybe another another video uh, off of the stuff that, that I'd done, but um, uh, there's been so many, uh, it's been so speculative and being able to come up with anything concrete to be able to sit there and talk about because there was no touring. The records, you're sort of wondering what the hell is gonna happen next. So there's an awful lot of this kind of like, you know, let's sit down and wait. So yeah, yeah. it's been kind of a, a, a horrible time to be able to sit there and say, hey, what's going on? Um, but I was thinking about it today, and I've been real lucky in that um, uh, I, I'm at a place that I could keep working right across. I, I never really had any intention of wanting to leave Canada, to tell you the truth. I don't like traveling. 
I can go back and forth across Canada to keep constantly performing, and I'll probably do that until I drop dead. So as soon as I'm allowed to get back out again, I can't wait to get out to, to, to Halifax, to Sylvia, I've worked with as a, a player. I've met a lot of players there, obviously, that are all wonderful. And, uh, and what I really like about the gigging that I do these days, the way I actually treat it, because I don't need large audiences, so I can keep coming back. You know, it keeps me busy and knowing that um, I'm not attempting, I probably wouldn't be able to anyhow, or, uh, to go into some large theater or whatnot and put 3,000, 4,000 people in there and then perform and then don't bother coming back for three, four years after the fact because you've sort of blown it all out. And I'm not saying that because of sour grapes. I mean, I really like going out and, and when I'm with there's whether there's 35 to 100 people, two to 300 people that are sitting and watching what's going on, I take great I take great pride in it. I get to see the folks really up close. Right. Uh, I get to talk to them, and and then I can go away for five, six months to the West Coast and do some stuff and get myself into the prairies in Toronto and, you know, you, you name it, Calgary and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff in B.C. And then come back. So I keep myself busy five, six, seven months of the year being able to go back and, and call it the way I like to. I haven't got any managers, no, there's no managers, no no uh, record company. <laughs> well, there is now, but there's no agents or nothing that I have to deal with. If I want to go to work, I just, you know, pack a bag, make a few phone calls and off I go. Um, I don't know if that will change in the next little while. If I'm lucky, well, with my luck, I'll probably get famous at 80, you know. <laughs> So Sean, Sean made a point earlier, Alfie, before you came on, and he really called it a multi-genre uh, platform that you work off. So th what you're talking about there works hand in hand because you could play to 35 people in a small cedar, or, you know, gosh, a, a little, a yeah. little intimate tavern, or you know. But back in our day, we saw you playing at the Misty Moon and the Crazy Horse, and the, gosh, even at the Metro Center, I'm sure, uh, you know, to full a rock band. So it's kind of cool to be able to do both those elements. Well, I'm going to be doing the Alma Combo on the 24th, and and I called the guys because there, there's now we're talking about you know when I play in Toronto, there's the guys that I know for a long time and put a band together. Now, I I, I love playing with a band, but there's something and and I do uh, depending on the, like the budgets and where we're playing, what we're up against, but. It's nothing that I like to, the, the, the stuff with theater and being able to stand up there and, and do things and sort of like call on, um, there was great, a lot of experience and stuff that I sort of fell into. I, I never for one moment thought that I was going to attempt at being some kind of like a, 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 a theater actor, a singer, you know, and doing shows like that. I just, I really kind of fell into it. And the biggest, um, the biggest thing that drove me in a situation like that in the years way back was I needed to put diapers on the kids, you know, I mean, I needed to <laughs> had a wife and small children and stuff and in the record company. I mean, I can understand why they didn't want me doing things like that, writing commercials, singing commercials, uh, all of a sudden asking for, would you be interested in doing the play? And I said, what does it pay? You know, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that I threw myself into on a necessity when it was uh, writing for publishers and stuff. And EMI asked me, I mean, they all wanted to get a piece of something, you know, the record companies didn't like the idea that I was doing all that work because they like for you to uh, work for them only. I, yeah. you know, and I suppose at the time, had I done exactly what they'd asked me to do, which was, write the kind of rock and roll songs that the radios were playing at the time, write the writing songs that all of a sudden that any of the, the, the uh, uh, agents and stuff that we're dealing with, that you put you on these that great big trail through the States and stuff that's singing in front of everybody from Z, with the ZZ Top to Brian Adams to uh, you name the rock acts and stuff like that that we're going through. Had I played ball that way, wrote songs like that, but it was never in me to do that. I, 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 I just couldn't, I said, I just knew that in my head, if I started writing songs to please record companies and what would actually, you know, get you constantly traveling, uh, I'd be stuck with having to do those things for the rest of my life. Right. And I, and I, I thought about it back then. I, I didn't like the idea. I mean, at this point, passion, nothing could stand in your way. I start again. There's, we should be lovers and stuff. There are obviously the staples in what I do, but since then, I've done like 13, 14 different records, if not more. 
And I, there's a lot of things I could pick from. And I don't expect people to know them all, but I put them all out myself. And every now and then, um, uh, the people, you know, if I have a little chat with them, I'll, I'll throw in a new song and stuff and see how they re react to it and whatnot. But I'm not really trapped anywhere in particular. Mm -hmm. I could pretty much do as I please. And, um, and, and But I like to work, so I'll continue doing that. If anybody asks me again to do some more theater now, so, I could do it, but nobody's asking anymore. I could do a good Moses, I bet you. <laughs> uh, I, I want to throw a fun. We, we have a, a gal by the name MJ uh, Riemann, who uh, she's originally from uh, Newfoundland, but she's living in Alaska now. And she found out you were going to be on, and she sent me a really funny messenger. She, she had two stories about you. She didn't tell me the first one, but she said she reached out to you recently because she's been trying to learn simple words to say. It's a very uh, difficult song. Ask him about it. He emailed me the chart. It's a killer song co-written by Mark Jordan. Do you remember that? No, it's not Mark Jordan. It's uh, it was uh, Jerry Mosby. Simple words. Okay. Well, she yeah, was simple wrong. Simple words to say was myself and Jerry Mosby. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing she said, and of course you've already done your research and know that Alfie had a song in the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, over. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you know, really, I mean, yeah. Put my kids, I got my kids. You're, I mean, <laughs> what's, you know, you're right. You're a songwriter first, right? Uh, I, you're a songwriter I, first, a performer, the, but a songwriter first. It's, it really did turn out to be uh, that, you know, I mean, that's, uh, it's a, it pretty much solidified at this point when I started writing uh, the songs way back when the record company took it away from Surrender and made it, uh, it's Zappa Costa show, much to my chagrin. Everything sort of almost felt like I've been forced gumping my way through all this shit, you know? <laughs> it's like uh, the things just sort of start, and I, they were asked, could you do this? Yes, I'll, I'll do that. The, um, the Dirty Dancing soundtrack stuff, I was writing with, uh, I was writing for EMI, and I was doing a lot of writing for them, and uh, it was just a way to make, again, uh, making a paycheck and stuff, And but, it, you know, seems to be it's not like i didn't like it or anything but it was it's still an awful lot of work you're expected to come up with these right. tunes all the time and um and they'd ask you to do something like you know uh, these movies emi would be with whatever movie and they say they're uh, they're looking for something for um footloose or look for something for uh, uh was the tom cruise uh, Top gun, uh, top, top gun. gun yeah. you know, but I remember trying all that kind of same thing and, and sending them all down. And my point is, there was a lot of things that you did, you wrote, and they never saw the light of day. And this one time, there was a fellow, Jimmy Einer, that uh, I got to meet, and he was from New York and worked for Millennium, Millennium Records. And they asked me to sign, but I didn't want to go to New York. I had small kids. I just didn't want to travel at that point. Uh, um, I did some, but never nowhere near enough. But uh, Jimmy uh, said to me, he said, one day off, I'm going to give you a call. I'm going to expect you to sort of write me something. So he called. So of all the years I was sitting there writing with EMI and, per, per, you know, doing things and attempting to give them the song that they'd be looking for, nothing ever really panned out. But I, uh, Jimmy asked me to give him a song, and I gave him that song that I wrote for him for Overload. And who knew, right? All of a sudden, Dirty Dancing blows up. So... The harder you work, the luckier you get, and yeah. you win the lottery, you know, and so, and like, I could sit there and say that I had all these plans and I got it done because if I had planned all this, I didn't plan crap. It just, it just a uh, luck of the draw, and I guess, like I said, the harder you, the harder work, the luckier you get, and that sort of like got me out of a cockroach infested place. Got my kids, you know, and my wife and everybody settled in. Um, and as far as like renting a place and I, I didn't do anything because I didn't know what was going to happen for a long time. So, um, you know, by the time income tax and stuff, that's the kind of shit, you know, you sit there, you think you got, like, they'd sold millions and millions and millions of freaking records and your, your little bit and stuff like that, that you actually walk away with and people thinking that you just sort of like high on the hog, you know, but, um, I waited for a while to see just how much income tax is actually going to take. So I was a little bit careful about it. <laughs> We uh, and they took an awful lot, but uh, we we did fine. I kept things really minimal, and here we are, happy, still doing what the hell it is we like to do. Right on. Let's do this. We'll take our first break, and then what we'll do is we'll come back, 
And uh, I'd like to hear more about, and I watched a video today, off the, I, you know, I'm sorry, the name is, is it Saved or Save Me? Is that from saved. the new? Yeah, that was from I've the been new saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, love it's it. It's the new album, yeah. Okay, that was a cool video. I, I watched that one today. So I, I want to hear about the videos. It's, it's That's still a medium that's, that's going to be profitable for you. I want to hear more about that too. Yeah, Let's sure. Take, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. How's that? Boston. 